The reading of the Gospel this morning is from Luke. I shall read the New International Version translation of chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. This is a story that so many of us have heard on many occasions, but let's cherish this story and hear them with confidence and joy. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This church is blessed in many ways. One of the ways we're blessed is with the greatest cleaning person I've ever encountered in the church. Yeah. <laughs> and she is so diligent that this week she cleaned and waxed up here. And there's a good chance you could see me. Should be during the service. Scott, there's Scott. Scott is gone. He escaped. Scott escaped. Okay. I was going to harass Scott, but since he's not here, I can't. I can't harass him. Peace. The angels appear and announce. Peace is a theme that we see running through the scriptures. This morning I got on my, my Bible program and I put peace in the New Revised Standard Version. And you realize the word peace appears in the Bible over 2,000 times. It's one of the most talked about things in the entire Bible. In fact, virtually every time God appears to people, he begins or ends with some sort of an announcement about peace. One of the gifts that Jesus brings us at Christmas. The gift of peace. Now peace is something we don't often feel at Christmas time. We get so caught up in the hecticness of it. Anyone who's ever been to a mall on Black Friday or the day before Christmas knows sometimes there's not a lot of peace in the Christmas season. Has anyone ever been to a mall on Black Friday? One time? <laughs> when I was a boy, that was one of my family traditions. My dad and brother and I would go out to break, out to lunch, a big lunch, on Christmas Eve. And then the three of us would go to the mall. Actually, we'd go to a, usually a field about six miles from the mall because there was no parking at the mall. And then we'd have to walk to the mall from the field we parked at that was like ten miles away. It was getting further as we talked. <laughs> and then you get in the mall and you just pray to find anything because my dad needed to buy my mom a Christmas present. We usually end up getting frustrated and just buying anything we could find standing in those lines. The scary thing is I do have fond memories of those Christmases in the mall. <laughs> but it was always a chaotic time. And then our calendars, our calendars that are already busy throughout the year, when you hit Christmas, get so much busier. There's so much we have to get done. So many things we want to do. Need to make it to downtown Mount Dora for the lighting of the trees. Need to make it back for the Christmas stroll. Need to make it back for when they've got snow and sledding in Donnelly Park. Got to get all these events we've got to get to. Got to go to TSO. Got to go to the parade. Got to 
got Christmas parties lined up. And somewhere in the midst of all that, you've got to go do some Christmas shopping yourself. And then you've got to wrap presents. You've got to get those cards written so they're at the post office in time. It's amazing how busy we get during the month of December compared to the rest of the year. In fact, I, I have people complain to me in December that they don't have time for the things they normally do, so we, we tend to push away some of our, our devotional time and our prayer time because we have so many other things. We are so busy. We're trying to, to create this, this perfect Christmas experience for our family, for our grandchildren, for our children, for our spouses, for somebody. That perfect Christmas experience that, that really exists in a Norman Rockwell painting. It has never actually happened in any real person's home. But we stress ourselves trying to do it. And then when one of your relatives shows up and you discover they're a Jets fan and one watches the Jets on TV, that just blows Christmas. I'm sorry if there's any Jets fans here, but that's what I can do for taste. We get so busy, and we get so preoccupied trying to create this perfect Christmas that we become stressed, we become worried, we become angry and frustrated, and we find that, that rather than being a time of year when we're filled with peace, Christmas can be a stressful, non-peaceful time. But in the midst of all this, this hectic busyness comes a baby. And angels announcing peace on earth. That baby brings with him the gift of peace. And it's something that we desperately want. We desperately are trying to find peace, even if we can't seem to grasp it. I did a Google search this morning, and in less than a second, I got 861 million distinct websites about peace. Most of them giving instructions on how to find peace, how to make peace, how to create peace, why we don't have enough peace. You get 861 million. That's like three websites on peace for every one American. Somebody's making a lot of websites on peace. Are you guys making, sitting at home in your spare time, making websites about peace? If it's not you guys, then somebody else is really busy. But yet, with all of this, we don't seem to be very good at finding peace. We don't seem to be very good at having peace. And yet the angels announce the coming of peace to those on whom God's favor rests. And good news to the whole earth. <clears throat> so there must be something to this. And then we go and we see a mother and child and a father in a manger. And we think, okay, there's peace. It's idyllic. It's quiet. But that wouldn't have been the way it is. We tend to... There was a manger scene here, wasn't there? There was. You put it there, okay. It's gone now. Okay? If I can't use the manger scene as an illustration.
thousands of people have poured into Little Bethlehem for the census. And there would have been family reunions like you couldn't believe. People would have stayed up all night long celebrating and drinking and singing. It, it would have looked like Bourbon Street on Mardi Gras. <laughs> this would not have been a quiet, peaceful place. And even when you step back and go to the manger, the cave where Jesus is born, it is filled with animals, and they're all making noise and scuffling around, and, and it probably stinks to high heaven in there. And in the midst of that smelly, noisy environment, we have a baby born. But somehow, in the midst of all of that, we find peace. So there's two things that you need to know. First, for God, peace is a priority. Peace is incredibly important for God. That's why it's talked about over 2,000 times in the Bible. That's why virtually every time you get an angel or a godly messenger coming, they'll say, peace, peace to mankind, peace to those who God's favor rest, or somehow give a message of peace, because peace is important to God. And when God, it is so important that when God looks down and sees people unable to reconcile to him, and sees people unable to reconcile with each other, sees strife and division and problems, God doesn't send another angel. God doesn't send one of his lieutenants. God comes himself in the form of his son. Peace is so important that when it's time for reconciliation, he sends Jesus, his own son. And so as we, we get into that chaotic scene, we suddenly come into the manger and we see God lying there in the manger. And we see Mary and Joseph, mother and father, knowing what has just happened. And in the midst of this chaos, we find this, this little bubble of peace. There's an old story about a man who was walking into a town. And as he's walking into town, he encounters death. And he asks death, what are you doing coming to town? That's a, I have to harvest a hundred souls today. And the man runs ahead of the town and banging on everyone's door and saying, death is coming and death is coming to take a hundred souls today. People bar their doors and they block their windows out. That day, a thousand people died. As the man is leaving the town that night, he encounters death again. And he says to death, I thought you said you were coming to reap a hundred people. How come a thousand died today? And death said, I did. I only reaped a hundred. Stress and fear got the other night. <laughs> the angel, the, the shepherds out there on that field, they saw the angel and immediately became scared and fearful. They probably had every bad thing they've ever done in their lives flood into their head and think, oh no, here come the angels, God is coming and we're in deep doo-doo now. They know everything we've done. And you can imagine their fear and worry. Now, how would you feel if suddenly God appeared in front of you and you thought, uh-oh. And you start thinking about everything you've ever done wrong. And God the angels switch the script. So don't worry about what you've done. We come with good news. Readings of peace. Because the Messiah has been born. And the shepherds rush to where the Messiah is. They suddenly become filled with purpose. They become braver. They've lost that fear. And they come into that little bubble of peace where Mary, Joseph, and when we encounter God in the form of Jesus, it takes away that fear. Because all those things we've done wrong, all of those problems in our past, they melt away as we find forgiveness and love in God's presence. And we find peace in the presence of God. Gazing on a little child. Gazing on an innocent baby. We find joy. We find our 
our insides suddenly loosening, that stress dissolving, we find peace. But there's a second aspect of peace. Besides just peace of mind, that inner peace that we find when we encounter Jesus, peace goes beyond us. You notice that bubble starts with Mary, Joseph, and the baby and expands to shepherds. When Jesus is teaching his disciples about being a disciple, he says, if you're in worship and you are going to make your offering and you remember that you had an argument with someone, that you have a dispute with someone, that you're annoyed with someone, that you don't like someone, that you, one of your brothers or sisters has upset you, don't give your offering, but go immediately to them and make peace with them because reconciliation between each other is more important than worship. It's more important than giving. I'm going to say this part of the sermon after you've done your offerings. <laughs> I don't want everyone to jump up and say, oh, can't give an offering tonight, and you go apologize. Jesus says that is more important than worship. Reconciliation. But reconciliation is hard. When it came time for us to be reconciled with God, it took the death of his son on a cross. And Jesus God looked at those shepherds, and he knew that shepherds are kind of shifty, shady characters. But he still sent his angels to them to announce that the Messiah had come, letting go of all that past. And when it comes time for us to reconcile with each other, to make peace with each other, there's not a person in this room who hasn't been hurt by someone else, who hasn't been betrayed by someone else, who hasn't been let down by someone else, who hasn't been angered by someone else. And we hold on to a lot of that hurt and that anger and that frustration. And it keeps us from truly being at one. Then we go back to that day and we see that God let go of all that stuff for us to reconcile with us. And it cost God a lot. Reconciliation wasn't easy. It cost him his son's life. It says we're to go do the same. And for us to have peace with each other isn't going to be easy. It's going to cost us something. As we have to let go of our, our pain and our hurts. We have to let go of, of getting even. We have to let go of that stuff. And when we do, and when we let that love of God bind us together in peace, we find that we become a more unified body. We become a family, brothers and sisters. And that bubble, that start peace that started with Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, that expanded to the shepherds, expands to us as we begin to live in peace. And this world that we live in, which right now is dividing politically as a schism, is dividing over racially, is dividing internationally is dividing in so many ways that people are finding it hard to live together. The church is the one place where we can say we may disagree on something. We may not see eye to eye, but we can live in peace and harmony and love. And we can do that because God came to live in peace with us. Because Jesus came to reconcile with us. And because of that, we find peace within. And because of that peace within, we can offer peace without. And as we live in peace, the bubble of pain, people see that another way of life is possible. And they come to On Christmas morning, we see a baby. And that baby brings with us the gift of peace with God and peace with us. And then asks that we take that gift of peace and share it with the world outside. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.